Welcome to the awe-inspiring Canadian Rockies. In August of 2023, we embarked on an unforgettable seven-day adventure to explore the beauty of this expansive landscape. So come and join us on this journey as we uncover the most incredible sights, experiences, and adventures awaiting in the heart of the Canadian Rockies. We started our journey in Calgary, where we picked up our car and then headed to our nearby hotel to get some rest before our journey. Our plan was to drive up the Icefields Parkway straight to Jasper to spend our first few days. Here, we plan to spend a day to see Spirit Island at Maline Lake, as well as Maline Canyon. Then make our way back down the Icefields Parkway, stopping at all of the major viewpoints to see Athabasca Falls, Senwapta Falls, Columbia Icefields, the Skywalk, Pato Lake, and a bow lake as we made our way back down to Banff. In Banff, we plan to stay a few more days to see Lake Louise, Moraine Lake, as well as take the gondola up to the top of Sulphur Mountain before heading back to Calgary to spend our last couple of days before heading back to Orlando. Ghost Lake. There it goes. Boom. We are Map on. done. I don't even have to do it in After Effects. Before our trip, I put together this preset itinerary of places to see as we made our way up to Jasper. A few stops were essential and a few optional if we had some extra time throughout the day. Our very first stop was Ghost Lake. Nestled at the foothills of the Canadian Rockies, Ghost Lake, as we come to find out, is actually a reservoir that is formed along the Bow River and creates this tranquil place. But I have to admit, the highlight of this stop for me was the ground squirrels, who seem to be very vocal about us being there. <laughs> Oh, he doesn't like me. He doesn't like me. Oh. Oh. Oh, but I like you. He like screamed. I know he's yelling at me. What? Oh, look at this. Look at this little incredible place we just discovered. That is somebody's house. What a beautiful location. We jumped back in the car and headed over to our next stop in Banff, which was Cascade Ponds. Cascade Ponds is a series of ponds that sit at the foot of Cascade Mountain, and you can see them from the road as you make your way towards Banff. It's a perfect little stop to stretch your legs for a bit and walk the small trail that makes its way around the pond.
Cascade Ponds was also the first location that we came across the famous Parks Canada Red Chairs. You can find these chairs all over the parks, strategically placed with peaceful, breathtaking views, and we were excited to come across our first one. Next, we headed into Banff to stop and see Bow Falls. Bow Falls is located just outside the city of Banff and is easily accessible with a parking lot nearby. But it's a popular destination, so if you're driving here, I highly recommend arriving early as spaces are limited, especially with the frequent bus arrivals throughout the day. There is a trail that goes along the Bow River, which takes you straight up to Bow Falls itself. Although Bow Falls boasts only a modest 9 meter drop, its beauty is still mesmerizing. We lingered here for quite some time, exploring the riverbanks upstream to enjoy the stunning views, including a glimpse of the famous Fairmont Banff Springs in the distance. Once we were done at Bow Falls, it was getting late in the day, so we decided to continue our drive to Jasper on the Icefields Parkway. The Icefields Parkway is considered one of the most beautiful drives on the planet and stretches 232 kilometers as it winds its way through the continental divide between mountain peaks, ice fields, and sweeping valleys. If you have the opportunity to experience this drive firsthand, I highly recommend it. We've got a snack bag. Okay, so I picked up a bunch of like Canadian chips. So we've got this all dressed up, these all dressed up chips, and then I also got what? ketchup chips. This is sweet and spicy ketchup chips, so excited to try it. I think I want to try the, the all dressed up chips first. We'll give these a go. Yeah, try some Canada chips. They smell like, like salt and vinegar. It's like sour cream and onion. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, they're pretty good. I like them. Ooh, look at this. Wow. This is our view right now. It's pretty spectacular. Whoa, look at that. Incredible. In Jasper, we stayed at this adorable hotel called Pine Bungalows, which is situated on the Athabasca River. We were able to book a cabin on the waterfront, which gave us this incredible view. Since we were exhausted from our drive to Jasper, we were happy to find that there was a restaurant located on a property where we capped off our day with some elk tartare, bison short rib, and an orichette pasta before calling it a night. The next morning, we started our day at sunrise, where we started making our way towards Maline Lake, where we could decide if we wanted to take the boat ride over to Spirit Island. However, along the way, we couldn't resist stopping at the breathtaking Medicine Lake, even though it wasn't a part of our planned itinerary. Seeing that there was no one else around, we simply had to take advantage of the moment and enjoy this view.
Despite the detour, we managed to still be among the first visitors to arrive for the day. Maline Lake is one of the largest natural lakes in the Canadian Rockies, spanning 22 kilometers to the glacial mount channels of the Coronet Glacier. As beautiful as Maline Lake is, the highlight here is located 14 kilometers away and is only accessible by taking one of the boat tours or kayaking. With a stroke of luck, we managed to secure the last two spots on the first boat tour. If you have the opportunity, I highly recommend taking this 90-minute boat tour, especially if you catch the first departure. During the journey, we had the chance to delve into the rich history of the geological wonders of Maline Valley while soaking in the breathtaking views of its snow-capped mountain peaks. Upon reaching our destination, we disembarked to follow a brief 15-minute trail along the picturesque shoreline, offering spectacular views of Spirit Island. Spirit Island holds profound spiritual significance for the Stony Nakoda First Nation, who view mountains as physical embodiments of their ancestors. Its unique positioning, surrounded on three sides by the same mountain range, is exceptionally rare and holds special importance for the Stony community. Standing here in the presence of Spirit Island was a profoundly moving and peaceful experience. Even though we were only here for 15 minutes, I understand now why it's named Spirit Island. It's one moment from this trip that will forever stay with me. Once we returned from our cruise, we had lunch at the View Cafe that overlooks Maline Lake before jumping back in the car and heading to our next destination, which is Maline Canyon. However, before getting there, I spotted a charming riverside stop that I simply had to explore. One of the greatest advantages of having your own car on trips like this is the ability to create your own itinerary. When you encounter unexpected gems along the road, you have the freedom to stop and explore at your leisure. Unlike strict schedules followed by organized tours, this flexibility is always our preferred way to travel. Maline Canyon, which is the deepest in Jasper National Park, has depths exceeding 50 meters in certain spots. It offers an opportunity for exploration via six bridges spanning different points of the canyon. The second bridge standing over 50 meters above the water provides the highest vantage point. If you venture deeper into the canyon, you'll encounter a third bridge where you're able to see this magnificent waterfall. Since we still had time in our day, we decided to add one of our optional stops in our itinerary, Pyramid Lake. Pyramid Lake, nestled at the foot of Pyramid Mountain and overlooking the town of Jasper, is among the 20 small lakes formed by retreating glaciers in the Pyramid Bench area. It's renowned for fishing and paddling and drains into the Athabasca River through Pyramid Peak. We followed a small trail along the lake's edge to bask in the breathtaking mountain vistas before heading back to our hotel. On our way back, we stopped by Nestor's Market, which is their local grocery store to pick up some dinner. Yeah, sweet and spicy ketchup. Let's try it. I like it. I was expecting it to be more ketchupy, but it's like the slightest hint of ketchup. Like, 
because these are sweet and spicy ketchup, so maybe these are a little different. Yeah. Dinner with a view. Dinner with a view. Couldn't ask for a better restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> Your little friend joining us for dinner. After the meal, we decided to use the rest of the day to explore the small trail that went along the river in front of our cabin to cap off our day. We were able to see our first deer and elk across the river. And they say here that you want to make a lot of noise or sing while you hike so that you don't accidentally startle any bears. So just in case you are wondering, most of our hikes ended up sounding something like this. It's final countdown. <laughs> The next morning, we got up early to start making our way down to Banff. We had a full itinerary of places to see as we made our way back down the Icefields Parkway. So we left before the sunrise to start making it to our first destination. And it was on this drive where we encountered our first up-close elk sighting just off the road. After our marvelous encounter, we headed to our first location. Athabasca Falls, which we were excited to have all to ourselves. Athabasca Falls stands out as one of the most powerful waterfalls within the mountain national parks. Cascading over a layer of hard quartzite, it has sculpted intricate features including potholes into the softer limestone beneath within its short canyon. Originating from the glaciers of the Columbia Ice Fields, the Athabasca River is one of the largest river systems in Jasper. Once we finished admiring the power of the Athabasca Falls, we got back on the road to start heading to our next location. But along the way, I couldn't help but stop at a small lookout called Goats and Glaciers. This is a beautiful spot overlooking the Athabasca River. But unfortunately, we didn't see any goats, but we did see some glaciers. Next, we ventured into the renowned Samwapta Falls, which consist of upper and lower waterfalls fed by the Athabasca Glacier. The upper falls boast an impressive 18 meter drop with a short hike leading through the pine forest to the lower falls where you can find three waterfalls that cascade over the Sunwapta River. As we made our way to our next destination, I caught sight of another stunning viewpoint with even more glaciers that I just had to snap a photo in front of. Next, we began our journey towards Tangle Falls, which can be easily overlooked if you're not paying close attention since there aren't many signs leading up to it. However, it's conveniently located right off the road and definitely worth taking a few minutes to appreciate its beauty. While we were there, we stumbled upon a small trail leading up the side of the waterfall, allowing us to get a closer look and truly admire this stunning sight. Our next stop was the Columbia Icefields viewpoint to admire the spectacular view before arriving at the Glacier Discovery Center. The Glacier Discovery Center serves as the hub for the Columbia Icefield adventure offering various activities such as glacier hiking or visiting the glass-floored skywalk, which is what we opted to do. While at the Glacier Discovery Center, we learned that there was a mudslide blocking the Icefields Parkway towards Banff, 
causing many of the visitors to be stuck in Banff. This rare situation allowed us to be the first and only visitors on the skywalk that morning, which is a stroke of luck we still can't believe. The Columbia Icefield Skywalk boasts a remarkable glass bottom platform suspended over 918 feet above this rugged terrain, providing breathtaking views of waterfalls and glaciers among the entire walkway. Once we returned, we indulged in a meal at the Discovery Center. Pinty. With the glacier view. That view. Not too shabby. Since we couldn't continue due to the mudslide, we decided to cross the road after our meal and take a closer look at the Columbia Ice Fields at the Basca Glacier. The Athabasca Glacier is one of six main toes of the Columbia Ice Fields, and it's easily accessible from the parking lot. As you drive towards the lot, you'll see small signs along the road indicating where the glacier was in previous years. Unfortunately, the glacier has receded at a rate of 5 meters per year and has lost over half of its volume in the last 125 years. While you can reach the edge of the glacier from the viewpoint, a tour is required if you do want to walk on the glacier itself. When we finally heard that the roads were clear, we continued our journey towards our next destination, which was Pato Lake. Pato Lake is a vibrant blue glacier-fed lake that is located in Banff National Park. Throughout the summer months, glacier rock flower flows into the lake, which gives it this breathtaking color, and it's absolutely beautiful. Next, we headed to Bow Lake, which is one of the largest lakes in Banff, fed by the meltwater from the Bow Glacier in the Wapta Ice Fields. This lake lies at the base of Bow Summit and has this beautiful aquamarine color. Bow Lake ended up being one of my favorite stops on the Icefields Parkway and is well worth a visit while you're here. Our final stop on Icefields Parkway was Crow's Foot Glacier, which is a small overlook point where you can view the glacier. The runoff of this glacier feeds into Bow River, which flows through Banff National Park. At the very end of our day, we were so excited to finally make it to our hotel while in Banff, the Royal Canadian Lodge. So we just checked into our hotel at the Royal Canadian Lodge and oh my goodness, look at this. We have a fireplace. Look at how beautiful this is. It's a little rainy. I mean, you've got a tree in our winter view, but that's okay. Look at how spectacular this room is. You like it? Pretty nice. Yeah? Cozy. Pretty cozy. It is five o'clock in the morning and we are heading to Lake Louise. We are the only ones on the road right now. We are determined to get a parking spot. We're determined to get a parking spot. So we're gonna get there. We're gonna be the first ones there. I doubt it. I bet people will get there even early. But it's like Kelly Park. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's at least a handful of people already there. Yeah. We're at Lake Louise. And we got a parking spot, and <laughs> we're definitely not the first ones here. This is the first, the first row of parking is already taken, and it's only 
5.49 in the morning. So now we're just waiting for the sun. We're here, we made it. Lake Louise is renowned as one of the most breathtaking mountain scenes in the world, and you can easily see why. It has beautiful turquoise waters tinted by rock flower from the glaciers and draws millions of visitors every year. We were thrilled to get a chance to experience this iconic location at sunrise. We spent some time here watching the sunrise, and as the sun rose, so did the number of people that started to show up, until we found ourselves completely surrounded on the pier. So we decided to take a break and find a place to grab coffee in the Fairmont to warm up. Once we were done, we decided to take a walk along the trail that ran the perimeter of Lake Louise in order to enjoy a different view of the lake. After Lake Louise, we made our way over to the Lake Louise Ski Lodge where we could take the shuttle up to Moraine Lake. Personal vehicles are not permitted to park at Moraine Lake, but you can take a shuttle, public transportation, or guided tour. We opted to drive ourselves to Lake Louise so that we could arrive earlier and just use the shuttle to Moraine Lake. Moraine Lake is as beautiful as Lake Louise with mesmerizing blue waters that will take your breath away. There are even piles of boulders that have a trail leading up to the top so that you could get this phenomenal view of the lake. And by the way, this footage has not been altered in any way. This is actually what the lake looks like, and it's stunning. When we got back from Moraine Lake, we decided to take the ski lift up to see if we could get a nice viewpoint of the area and perhaps see some bears on our way up. Unfortunately, about halfway up the mountain, it started raining on us. And in addition to the colder air at the top of the mountain, we had a freezing, bone-chilling experience. And we weren't able to see much from the top, but it was still a really cool experience. But we did opt for the closed gondola on the way back since we were freezing. Later in the day, we went from one gondola to the other since our next stop was the famous Banff Gondola. Situated at the base of Sulphur Mountain, the Banff Gondola offers an 8-minute ride above treetops, ascending 700 meters to the summit of Sulphur Mountain that towers above the town of Banff. From this vantage point, you can discover six distinct mountain ranges extending out into the horizon, and the views from the upper terminal are breathtaking. 
Since it was getting late in the day, we decided to see if we could grab a bite to eat while we were up here. And luckily enough, we were able to get seated at the Northern Lights Alpine Kitchen, which is a buffet with the most spectacular views. After dinner, it started to rain, but Noah didn't want to lose the opportunity to take the boardwalk up to the Sulphur Mountain Weather Observatory to take in the views before we made our way back down. So he braved the weather and made his way up to the top of the trail to capture this amazing sight to cap off our day. The very next morning, we got up early to start making our way to see the famous Johnston Canyon. Johnston Canyon offers a beautiful trail through lush forests and suspended catwalks to see the upper and lower falls. Unfortunately for me, I had injured my ankle the day before and was unable to make it very far. So Noah ventured off ahead of me to see if he could get a glimpse of the waterfall. So since I was injured, we decided to take it easy and rest for the day and explore the city of Bam that afternoon before grabbing room service and calling it a night. The next morning, we got up early and caught our next sighting of elk on the side of the road in Bam as we made our way up to capture a photo with the famous Bam sign. Once we were done, we started making our way over to Golden, where we caught sight of the famous Canadian Railway as we made our way to our next destination, the Golden Sky Bridge. The Golden Sky Bridge is home to Canada's highest suspension bridges. These bridges are suspended 426 feet above the Columbia Valley with incredible views of the Rocky and Purcell mountain ranges. There are two bridges that cross the valley, and the entire experience takes about an hour to do. And if you're looking for an epic experience, this is definitely something you'll want to try. After the Golden Sky Bridge, we started making our trek back towards Calgary to spend our last couple of days. And we couldn't leave Canada without staying in one of the famous Fairmont hotels. And I have to admit, I was very excited. And when we walked into the beautiful lobby at the Fairmont Calgary, it did not disappoint. The room, on the other hand, was a little underwhelming and we weren't quite happy that we had to pay extra for functional internet. On our very last night in Canada, I couldn't think of a better way to finish off our incredible adventure than having dinner at Sky360. But before we headed in for our reservations, we couldn't pass up the opportunity to get a sneak peek of the views from the observation deck on the top of the tower. If you're brave enough, there's even a glass floor here where you can get a photo of yourself suspended high above the city streets below. Located 600 feet in the Calgary Tower, this revolving restaurant gives you magnificent views of the city of Calgary and the Rocky Mountains in the distance. If you made it this far in the video, I want to thank you for joining us on our incredible journey through Canada. This video has been a bit of a departure from our usual style and I hope that you've enjoyed it as much as we've enjoyed sharing it with you. Our trip through Canada has been nothing short of magical and at times just felt like an incredible dream. 
It's moments like these that truly make me grateful for opportunities we have to explore such breathtaking places. So thank you, Canada, for exceeding all of our expectations. We truly are grateful for all the memories that we've made here. Until next time.